it's a cracking piece. So Britain, Britain wrote it very shortly before he dies. Um, it, uh, it picks up with sort of themes that Britain had been interested in throughout his life, uh, particularly sort of classical themes, uh, um, sort of stuff from antiquity, um, and also the, the theme that is common through most of Britain's operas of a sort of troubled figure. Um, Fever is certainly that. Um, it, the, the piece is, uh, although it's only 15 minutes long, it's very operatic in its scope, and you get the feeling that if Britain had lived longer or been able to, that this might have become a full-blown opera. Um, as it is, uh, so he, he uses the text from uh, Robert Powell's translation of, of the Racine. Um, you get the sense of the whole story, even though it's just a, a monologue, for, it's just one character. Um, and th there are parts of the action which uh, aren't, aren't represented in, in the text, uh, but which are absolutely represented in the music. Um, and yeah, uh, for, for a short 15 minute um, sort of yeah, version of what is an enormous play, it's actually very all encompassing, crams a huge amount of uh, emotional material in there. So there, are, there are a few motifs that um, that appear throughout it. So you, you have the that figure from the beginning, which comes back in in various forms, um, which uh, originally is introduced in relation to Phaedra's uh, wedding day, but in its various incarnations, seems to represent Phaedra's uh, state of mind or or for her. Um, her sort of erotic persona, perhaps, or how she how she considers her relationship to Hippolytus. Um, there's there's at the same time the wedding day. There's a big sort of timp thing going on, uh, which represents Theseus, uh, terribly played, but, but the, yeah, quite a, you, Britain writes it with wooden sticks, timpani, very dry, sort of percussive, quite startling. Um, I guess causing military sound. Um, and then, uh, so there's you know, when Fiji first sings the name of Hippolytus, who she falls in love with. Uh, we, have, we have this interval, so a perfect fourth and then a falling major seventh, that then becomes associated not just with Hippolytus but with Aphrodite, so Aphrodite and, and Venus when that's used later. So there, there are motifs that he uses throughout to, to illustrate where, where um, Phaedra is sort of looking at internally. Harpsichord and continuo. Har harpsichord, um, Britain very into Baroque music, very influenced by Purcell. Um, and, and the harpsichord sound, I think, is sort of uh, roots us in this old world, in this world of antiquity. And the first time it's used, it's used predominantly uh, during Phaedra's sort of reckoning with Aphrodite, who she feel, who has cursed her, um, cursed her to fall in love with Hippolytus. And then the second time it comes back in, in the sort of second restitute section. She begins it with the text, O Gods of Wrath. So she's not addressing Aphrodite uh, directly, but, but uh, Aphrodite, the goddess of love, is sort of recast as a god of wrath who's taken vengeance on Phaedra. Uh, that, there's that, that instrumentation, that sound world, is, uh, is clearly important to Phaedra. <laughs> Timpani thing when representing Theseus. Um, it's used extensively in the middle as a big percussion interlude, which in the plays when Theseus, so Theseus is believed to be dead, when he returns, 
and and that percussion interlude seems to um, sort of signal his his return um, into the story. Um, there's also another interlude, so before the sort of last section, a big string symphonic thing, where um, Fiedra's just sang a song. <laughs> series of a sort of ascending uh, ascending string lines um, representing then her death and her her reckoning with her own death how she perceives that as give it, giving her freedom um, at, at the very end when she finally kills herself there is no that, that figure comes back again and again uh, so yeah uh, Britain's a a master of sort of pointing us in the right direction with um, little motifs. Oh.